what's up guys welcome back to the channel my name is travis and welcome back to another video so today we're going to be looking at and testing the affluent gas off chamber i guess we can call it that i don't know i don't really have a name for it you guys asked me to create something where we can drip the affluent in add a air stone and try to get some oxygen into it before it flows over and goes back into the tank so today i'm going to show you guys what i created over here in fusion 360 we're going to go down and connect it to the geo sump the geo calcium reactor I do have an air pump ready to go and uh, we'll test the pH and see what we get and see if it actually works. Now, just a little disclaimer here, guys. Uh, this is just kind of a fun thing. I'm trying to trying out, uh, making some content for you guys. I don't really have any intentions of selling anything like this. Um, it definitely needs some work. There's some things about it that I don't like. But other than that, uh, this is kind of just for fun and see if it actually works. So with that said, let's go ahead and move over to Fusion 360 and I'll show you guys what I got. Alrighty, so we're here in Fusion 360. I'm going to show you guys some of the features of this and kind of do the analysis here to cut it in half so you guys can see really what's going on on the inside uh, because I know the camera doesn't really pick up on it. So first things first, uh, it's going to attach here on the geo sump. So I made it, it big enough to pretty, pretty much slide over the acrylic there, added some slots for the M3 screws just to add a little bit of pressure to make sure it doesn't slide off. Now, uh, we do have two inlets here, for one for the... Um, the RO tubing and one for the air stone itself. Let me go ahead and turn off uh, this top here. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna go all the way down through these, uh, basically the same fittings. It's gonna go all the way through to the bottom uh, because our goal is to get the air stone and the effluent as far down into the chamber as we possibly can. That way it has more time as it comes through uh, to actually mix with the oxygen before it flows over into the tank. Other than that, it's a pretty easy, basic concept. I did add a lid here just to make sure that it will clip into place and um, keep the air bubbles in and salt creep and all that stuff down. Now, the only thing that I really don't like about it, which I can probably fix really easy, is I wanna extend this out a little bit more and then make this angle not as sharp on the, uh, let me fix that, on the top here, because I do find that the RO tube is kinked just a little bit and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get all the way in there. But other than that, the design is pretty simple. Um, and uh, the little test that I did last week that I showed you guys on Instagram, it worked out decently, but we're gonna do the final test today with the wooden air stone and not the ceramic to see if that really makes uh, much of a difference. So with that said, let's go and move down to the fish room and get this thing hooked up to the sump. Okay, so we're down here ready to install this. I'm gonna show you guys real quick uh, kind of the setup when it comes to the tubing and the air stone. So you can see it's a standard wooden, I believe it's Lee's air stone. Uh, it's uh, off of Amazon's two pack for like six bucks or something, so relatively cheap. And uh, it goes all the way down, sits at the bottom, and then we have our effluent line, again, going all the way down, sitting at the bottom right next to the air stone. Of course, I have a check valve. Always wanna use one of those for the air pump, just in case you don't want none of that stuff getting siphoned back in. And I just have a little bit of tubing here, which we're gonna connect directly to our uh, last, uh, or our secondary, secondary chamber here. And basically just do a test fit, connect it to the sump. Now, if this does work and I like it long-term, I will relocate it over there at the normal output. But for now, we're just testing. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, set this thing up. Now, let me get to the other side with my screwdriver. Just kind of slips into place here. Use the uh, screws right. A little tight there. All right, so that's good to go. We're gonna connect our air pump. Uh, this is just a, I don't know how many, let me see what this is. Yeah, so it's a two watt, nothing crazy. Um, I used to have a massive one for my fish system when I was quarantining a bunch of fish. Uh, I don't know where that is, but I think that might be a little overkill. So this is just a basic 2 watt air stone, or air stone, yeah, air pump, and uh, yeah, should work. Connect this. Bam. I'll just set it up here for, uh, well, we can set it down here. Now we're going to just directly connect it to the output of the affluent line. Disconnect, reconnect. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back on, get the flow going. And then once the pH stabilizes in the reactor, we'll do the same thing before. We'll, we will uh, look at the current pH on the display monitor. We'll come in, pull some effluent, turn everything off, pull the pH probe, put it in the effluent and test what we have for an increase in pH. And we are gonna calculate the one point increase just from having these two gas off chambers. So we'll take that into consideration as well. So let me go ahead and uh, plug everything up, get it running, and we'll be right back. 
All right, guys, we're back. It's been a little while since everything was connected. Now, I did have to remove the check valve for the air pump just because it was restricting a ton of air. And uh, I'll show you the before and after of the micro bubbles. It's a, it's a huge difference. So remove that. Everything seems to be working pretty well. Let's go ahead and check the pH in the calcium reactor and we will pull our sample. Looks like 6.82. And uh, try not to mess my camera up here. Let's go ahead and pull the sample. I do this with the camera in my, all right, let's see if I can do this on video. Here we go. And then we'll turn everything off and check the pH. Alrighty, there's our sample. Let's we'll set that right there. Let's go ahead and, my, it's a mess, man. I've been packing all day. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the CO2 tank. Uh, let's go ahead and get down here and turn off the, all right, maybe not, calcium mixing pump. <laughs> Should've used my other hand. Ugh. And the feed pump. All right, let's go ahead and pull our probe. And set it in our sample. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see the changes. It's gonna take a few minutes to settle. So I guess what I'll do is I'll come back in five minutes and we will check the pH. All right, so we're back. It's been about five minutes. Let's go ahead and check our reading now. The only issue I have is that I didn't think it was gonna go this high. So we're gonna to have to use the other probe because the calibration for the pH probe inside the calcium reactor is like what, four and seven, something like that. So if it's above seven, that's just, that's not even in the calibration range. So I'm actually going to pull another sample and use the probe from the sump because again, I didn't think it was going to be this high. But either way, I saw it jump up to 7.21. And uh, yeah, so if we go off the secondary chamber at uh, 6.82 to 6.92, so out of the secondary chamber at 6.92 to 7.7 .7 to 7.2, that's pretty good. But I don't really like the fact that it's not in the calibration range. So let's go ahead and pull the sample again. And I will use the probe from the sump here, which is calibrated, uh, I think it's like 7 to 10, something like that. Either way, it's within the range of calibration of the testing that we're getting. So let's do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this again. Double check the pH in the main chamber. Uh, 6.81, and we will pull the sample. And I already went ahead and loosened up the probe from the sump here, so we should be able to just plop it in the sample. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't think it was gonna be that high, so it's looking promising. So this would be more accurate than anything, given that it's within the calibration range. So we have our sump pH probe here. You know what I could do? I could probably toss it in here, but nah, nah, there's probably too many micro bubbles. Yeah, never mind. So we'll mix it around a little bit. Burp, 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 burp. And we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys, so we're back. It's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and check our pH probe. Looks like 7.23, so pretty close to what we got before. It's still going down a little bit. I guess I could let us settle for even a few more minutes but it's roughly the same as we got with the previous probe. But again, we wanted, wanted to double check just because it was out of the calibration range. So going from 6.8 is what we just pulled the effluent at, comes out of the secondary chamber at 6.9 based on our previous tests and getting it all the way up to 7.20. Um, I would say that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's successful, it does work. Now, I am going to leave this on here and let it run for the next few days to see if my graph shows any difference in pH. Now, understand I am um, dosing calc wasser here, so I do dose about 3,500 milliliters of calc a day, uh, which is a little under a gallon, and uh, that dumps directly into the tank there, goes in and disperses itself. I used to dump it into my refugium, but... It just, you know, it just kind of left this film on the top of the refugium because there isn't a ton of flow. So now I just kind of moved it over to this, uh, this chamber there. But either way, um, I am dumping calc. So my pH is relatively good. It usually stays between 7.9 and uh, 8.2, which is, you know, I'm happy with that. But uh, either way, I find, uh, I find this to be a success. Now I just settled down to 7.21. That's kind of where I'm, it's sitting at now. So either way, 6.9 to 7.21, pretty happy with that. 
Well, guys, that's about it for the video. If you have any questions or suggestions or maybe anything you want me to create or test out for the channel, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Now, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't really know what I'm going to do outside of just testing it out here in the fish room and using it for myself. Um, if you are interested in this, let me know via the website. You can contact me there. I don't really have plans of putting it up just because it does require my larger printer. And to be honest with you guys and transparent, I have a lot of orders backed up for my three larger printers. Um, I do have 20-ish, or I said no, 19 of the smaller ones and three of the larger ones. And, well, it, it, uh, it this would just be one more thing that I would have to kind of take a little while to print, and I don't really like doing that. So um, I might mod it to make it work for an Ender 3. That way I can mass produce it with the other printers. But outside of that, I really don't plan on selling it. But again, if you're interested, hit me up on the website. I might make an exception. And if you can wait a little while for me to create it, then we can go from there. So with that said, if you, uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, head over to fishfx.com. Buy three, get one free on 3D printing, getting some coral back in stock. And if you are military, police, or fire, 20% lifetime discount, just check out the link on there and go through that process and we'll hook you up. All right, until next time, peace.